Welcome to another TCGU video brought to you by the Chariot Group. My name is Bob Jackman and today we're going to begin the training for your smart board and your smart notebook. So this is the first section of training which we talked about earlier, we kind of introduced in a previous video. This training, uh, this very first section, is specific to the 800 series smart boards. It'll be very similar for a lot of other smart boards, so if you don't have an 800 series smart board, that's okay, uh, but it'll be very similar for those, but it's kind of designed around that particular model. The training, as we mentioned before, is split up into three main sections. This is going to be the first of the first section, and this first subsection uh, is the first of six subsections, and so I'm gonna kind of talk about those. Uh, those six subsections, this one is gonna be the basic use in Smart Inc. How to you know, plug in your smart board, get it started, get it running. Um, how to use Smart Inc. to write over things. Then we're gonna start the software and getting into the basics of the software and how to use that. Then we're gonna talk about the basic toolbar, display settings, how to print and export. Then we're gonna get into the gallery, linking to websites as well as using the internet browser. So you can use websites and gallery items that are there to make things uh, easy for you. Then we'll get into the Smart Exchange, and that's where we're gonna go online and find lessons other teachers have made and be able to use them in our classroom. And then we're gonna talk about support. You've gotta have a good system of support in place because you are gonna run into problems and having a plan in place of what you're gonna do can be very, very helpful. So this first subsection is, is going to cover these basic things. It's gonna talk about how to plug in, turn on, and orient your smart board. It's gonna talk about how to use the right-click on-screen keyboard and how to use the Smart Ink to write over things. We're just gonna set it up and kinda of get started with our smart board with this one. And so these are the I can statements I talked about before. These are all the things that you will be able to do at the end of this training. So let's jump right in. So let's first talk about how your smart board is plugged in and how to kind of get it started. And so with that, um, there's three main cables that are gonna plug in your smart board depending on the setup that you have. And the first is the USB. Uh, USB. That's gonna go to the smart board itself. This is what it looks like over here. And what this is going to control is the touch. Okay, so if you have your smart board and something like your touch won't work, that's going to be through the USB cable. So that can be helpful to know that if your touch isn't working, maybe unplug and plug back in that USB cable, and make sure that that's working. The second cable is going to be a, a VGA cable, or it could be maybe an HDMI. Um, and that cable is going to control the video, and that controls what you see. And so if there's anything wrong with the image of what you're seeing, that's gonna be the video cable, whether that be HDMI or, or uh, VGA. And so if you're having problems with the quality of the image you're seeing, that's gonna be through the projector. So you see I've got a projector above. Uh, some people may have a, a ceiling mounted projector that's way back. Anything having to do with how you see is going through that video cable and that projector. And then the last thing is if you have a sound system in your classroom, you may have an audio cable and that's gonna control sound and that's gonna obviously be what you hear. So if you're having problems with what you're hearing, that's gonna be the sound cable. Now it is possible sometimes that the sound may go through the USB cable. So depending on the particular setup that you have and how that is set up, that may be a little bit different, but most of the time that's gonna be through your standard uh, three and a half inch, or sorry, three, three and a half millimeter uh, audio cable. So that's, those are the plugs that are gonna plug in. Once you've got that all plugged in and turned on and everything, what appears on your smart board should be exactly the same as what's on your computer screen. So they call that mirroring. And so basically all you're doing is this is just a larger display that's a touchscreen display for your computer. And so anything you can do on your computer, you could do up at your smart board, except instead of using your mouse, you're gonna come up and touch the board. And every time you touch the board, it's the same as if you've clicked with your mouse. And so very, very simple that way. It's just controlling your computer the same way you would if you were sitting at your desk. So the first question is, okay, how do I turn on my smart board? Now you'll notice on the, on the bottom of the smart board is a pen tray. And on the very left of that pen tray, there is a power button that looks just like this. And what that power button does is it will turn on the board itself. So the board itself has power on these 800 series boards. And that will turn on the board itself if you have an integrated system, meaning that the projector is integrated with the board, then that power button will not only turn on the board, but it will also turn on the projector. If you do not have an integrated projector, if you've got a ceiling mounted projector or a different type of projector that may be a short throw, turning on that will just turn on the board and you'll have to turn on the uh, projector separately. So it's good to know kind of your setup and how that will work. Um, 
older boards, some of the older boards use USB power, so there is no power button. Uh, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, you also should have, if everything's working correctly, right here, you should have that solid green light. And if it's not green and it's not solid, then there's a problem. If it's blinking green, that means that it is communicating with your computer well. It just doesn't have the drivers installed properly. So you may need to check the software, make sure that's installed and running correctly. If it's red, that often means there's something with that USB cable that's wrong. And so maybe it needs to be checked to make sure that it's plugged in correctly. Basically the way that your, your smart board works, these 800 series boards are optical. And what that means is in the four corners of the bezel, there are little tiny cameras. And you'll notice around that bezel, there is this reflective tape. And so what it's looking for is as I put my finger in there, it breaks up that, uh, puts, puts my finger between that reflective tape in there. So that's how it knows where my finger is. So because of that, you can't put anything on the board or cover that up. I've seen teachers, sometimes they'll take the pen and stick it up here on the bezel itself rather than putting it into the pen tray. And what that does is it causes interference with those cameras working correctly. Another very common problem that we'll see is teachers will take a magnets. This board is actually magnetic and you can put magnets on it, but the problem is those magnets get in the way. And so we'll see teachers who will take a, a flyer, a note or something and put a magnet and stick it up on the top right hand corner of their board. And then when they go to draw on their board, weird things start happening because that, um, that magnet and that paper are getting in the way of that image. The other thing that's helpful to know is it uses that reflective tape. So if for some reason it gets dirty, you may need to uh, clean that reflective tape with a soft, wet, you know, soft, damp cloth and just kind of wipe that all the way around. Mostly it's just the bottom one that gets dirty. It gets a lot of dust on there. Okay. Um, also, when it comes to the board is if you write on it with dry erase markers, it will come off. Uh, it's not going to ruin the board, but you don't want to do that because it gets really dirty and dusty. So be aware of, of that as well. Uh, it is a multi-touch board, meaning that because of the way the cameras are, it can see multiple touches at the same time. And we'll get into some of that as we get into gestures and some of the things that can be done with that. So that's how the board works. It's also, because it's optical, it's very sensitive. So I've had issues where I'll stand up to the board and my jacket will touch the board, um, or I can get my finger really close but not actually touch it, and sometimes it will do stuff as well because it is very sensible because it's, it's seeing it. It's not the touching itself. It's the finger getting close that makes it happen. So here's a, a picture of the pen tray. And so you'll notice we've got the two pens and the eraser in the middle. Kind of in the middle here are a bunch of colored buttons that we can push to choose different colors. And so all I have to do is press the color of the button that I want and it will write in that color. And so very simple that way. Uh, the nice thing about this particular board is when I pick up a pen, it knows that I've picked up a pen. And so I can start using that pen to write. Uh, you'll see a little bit of difference with some of the other boards on that. Okay, I can also pick up the eraser if I want to erase. <clears throat> I can just erase on there. I want to erase with the flat side of the eraser though. I don't want to try to do just the tip of the eraser like this because it's not going to erase. It needs that flat surface. We'll get into some of the object awareness and how that works uh, and why that is a little bit later. So for right now, just know that you want to put it flat as you, as you erase on that. To orient the board, basically because we're using an external projector onto the screen, we need to tell the computer when we touch here, that's here on the image because those images can move slightly. And so we call that orienting the board. Now right next to the power button, you'll see that there is a button that has this little crosshair in here. It looks kind of like this, right? Okay, and we're gonna press that button. And what happens when I press that button is this orient screen comes up. And when the orient screen comes up, it's just gonna have a four, four points that I can go through to orient the board. If you had some of the older boards, they required nine points and you could do more points, which would make it more accurate. Because it's optical, we just need the four. Doing more points is only gonna waste your time. It's not gonna make it any more accurate. Okay, so just the four points are required. So you can see the target up here in the upper right-hand corner. I can just touch right in the center of that and let go and it knows now where that point is. A lot of times I like to use the pen. You don't have to use the pen, but I can use the pen and the trick is it's where you let go that matters. I can touch right in the middle of that button, uh, that marker, uh, the target. And when I let go, if I drag my finger down slightly as I let go, it's where it thinks I've let go that it, that it really counts. 
And so that can cause a huge problem if I'm, if I'm off. So a lot of times I'll use my pen, and to be more accurate, I'll put the pen on, and I can put the pen here and drag it to the center. Whoops. And if I drag it to the right spot and then I let go, that's what it's gonna record. Now if I mess up a spot, let's say I messed up that spot and I wanna go back and redo it, all I have to do is press that button again and it will go back and allow me to, to redo that. At the same time, if I press it, um, again, that will get me out of the Orient screen. So for example, when I was teaching, I had a student who would lean on the board to try to, to get higher and press the button that would make it the Orient screen come up. And so that could be a little bit of a problem. So rather than having to go through all the points in that case, um, if that were to happen, I could just press the button again and that's gonna get out of that screen, okay? Um, the biggest thing you'll know that you need to orient the board, let me just kind of do this right here. Do it very poorly. So if I'm drawing on the board and where it's writing is not where I'm writing, that's when you know you need to go through and orient the board. So when you set up the board the first time, it needs to be done. And if you've got a properly mounted, you know, smart board on the wall and you've got a projector that's mounted on the ceiling or, uh, or above it and it's not moving a lot, you shouldn't have to orient very frequently. If you happen to orient a lot, then there's a problem you need to, to go, could go to those support resources. Uh, so you should be able to orient that and have it stay pretty consistently for a while. I think I would orient once a week when I was teaching. When I first started teaching, I actually had a board on the wall and a projector on a cart and because they would move frequently, uh, that I, I had to orient frequently, but once I had it mounted on the wall, I didn't, I didn't have to orient very often. Next is the on-screen keyboard. And so I can type while I'm at the screen by bringing up the on-screen keyboard. There is a, a button on the pen tray that looks like a keyboard and that's right here. And all I have to do is press that and that will bring up an on-screen keyboard. And so I just touch where I want the typing to go and start writing. And it's just as if I was you know, typing on a keyboard, it's gonna pop those up. Now I don't wanna to try to do a home row 10 key and try to do multi-finger, that's not gonna work very well. Uh, plus you don't wanna get anything in the way of the, of the cameras as you do that, like resting your wrists on that would be really bad. And so uh, that's one way to go through and put text up on the screen. And then I can just X out of this to close that. Okay, if I want to right click, so you know, on your mouse you've got a left click and a right click. Uh, if I want to right click, there's a couple of ways that I can do that. The one way is there's a button on the pen tray on the right side, you'll see right here. And when I press that, what that does is the next time I touch something, it's as if I've right clicked it instead of left clicking it. So it's kind of like I change my finger to go from the left button to the right button. And that'll give me, usually when I right click something, I'll get a contextual menu of options. So that's the easy way. And remember, you're gonna press that and then you're gonna click on what you wanna right click. The other way that I can do it is to touch and hold for three seconds and it's gonna pop up that menu. So that's important to know because I would have students who come up and say, all right, move these into alphabetical order, move these into the correct order. And then they touch the first one and then they start thinking, where does it go? And then that would pop up and it'd kind of throw them off. So it's important to know how that works and why that's coming up. It's just changing it from a single click, or sorry, from a left click to a right click by holding. A third way on this board, because it is multi-touch, is I can touch with one finger and then tap with an adjacent finger. So it needs to be that next finger. I saw somebody trying to do it once by tapping with their index finger and then with their pinky and that didn't work so well. So it's gotta be the adjacent finger. So I touch with one finger, tap with the second finger, and it brings it up. So it's just a little faster than touching and holding. Uh, it tends to work better in notebook than outside of notebook, so be aware of that. The touch and hold can be really helpful there. So that's how I'm gonna right click to, to get those menus. So now between the on-screen keyboard and the right click and the you know, touching with your finger for the left click, I can do everything that I would do sitting at my computer because I've got the keyboard and the mouse both available up here while I'm on the board. So that can be really helpful. The next thing we're gonna talk about is Smart Ink. And that is basically, it's a program that runs in the background that allows the pens to really work so that they can write over things. So one thing you'll notice is when I pick up the pen, this little icon down here pops up and that is the Smart Ink. And what that does is that just makes it so that when I pick up the pen, I'm now able to draw. And wherever I draw, it will, it will draw. The cool thing about this, so if I get out of Smart Notebook, is I can click on, say, the internet. And when I come up here, this allows me to draw over this. So I can draw over other programs. 
um, and that enables me to highlight different things. So if we're in a lesson and we're talking about this website, I can notate different things, okay? Um, I can use my fist to erase on this 800 series board, so that allows me to erase things. Um, I can also draw things and use my finger to move them around, okay? Um, and so the Smart Ink enables me to just write wherever I'd like to, to to do different things. This little icon right here, I can move this around. This is the Smart Ink toolbar. And when I touch it, I'm going to get a bunch of options. And so I can choose a different color. Um, again, I'm choosing from the four major colors here. If I come to this color palette to the right, I've got an you know infinite number of colors I can choose from. So if I want to choose a purple, I could then choose a purple. I can change my line thickness a little bit lower. I can go to a highlighter choose different color highlighters if I want to highlight some content, whatever that may be. Uh, so that can be really helpful. I've also got this toolbox, which gives me a couple other things I can do, such as uh, the little camera allows me to take a picture and bring it into Smart Notebook, which is a great way to bring in content. The other one that I really like, though, is this, <clears throat> looks like an arrow going to an A. And what that does is that brings up this, allows me to write and convert that to text. So I can write the chariot group. It's gonna convert that to text for me. And if I want to edit that text, I've got a couple of four pen editing gestures. So if I need to add a space, I can draw a vertical line and it's gonna add a space. If I need to uh, get rid of something, I can just do a strike through line and it will get rid of that. If I want to insert something, I can do a little caret here and it will bring that up. And then I can insert text. Uh, if I want to change something, I can just circle and it's going to allow me to then change it. So once I'm happy with what it is that I've drawn, uh, I've written up there, is then I can set this checkbox over here, this check mark, and then it will say, where do you want this? And what I do is I touch where I want it to go and it will type it as if I, as if I typed that on the keyboard. So it's really easy to just handwrite something and convert that to text. So I don't even use the on-screen keyboard so much anymore because it's a lot faster just to write it. I also have the option uh, while I'm on this page, if you'll notice up, um, up here, I've got a really small one. I can click on that and I've got the option to clear, capture, or turn off Smart Ink. So I can clear all the ink. So rather than going through and erasing everything or picking up the eraser, that's a very fast way to be able to erase all the ink on a page. The other thing that I can do is if I were to write something first and then want to convert it later, so like, oops, I'm still writing in the highlighter, so let me find my highlighter here. I'm going to change this back to uh, a pen. Let's do green. So I'm going to do this. Oops, let's get rid of that. So if I write something on there and be like, oh, I didn't write it in the right spot, I want to convert that to text, I can just touch it. See how it selects it and then I can touch some more and it will add that to the selection. Once I've got that all selected, I've got to delete and convert to text. And so I can convert that to text and it'll say, okay, I've got that now where I want it. Now, if I touch up here, again, it just sticks the cursor there and types it. So it's as if I put my cursor there and type, notice it didn't get rid of that. So that can be a little bit problematic for, for some. So if I wanted to redo that, What I would do is write that out again, convert that to text, cherry group where do I want it? Well, if I highlight, it didn't work. Sometimes if I can highlight it, it will overwrite it. So that's one way that you can get that to work. So that's the Smart Ink. And that's going to enable me to, to write over different things. You'll see that same Smart Ink kind of pops up here when I'm in Smart Notebook as, as well. Older versions, the Smart Ink will run slightly differently depending on that, but the newer versions, this is how Smart Ink is working. And the current version that I'm using right now is 15.2. We'll talk more about the software later. So for you to practice, a couple things you may want to do. First, go to your Smart Board, find the connections, look at how it's plugged in. Okay, if you're using a laptop as a teacher, you may be plugging that in every day. If you've got a desktop, it may just always be plugged in and it's just there. But it's good for you to know where those cords are in case there are problems, especially with the USB. Sometimes it's just a matter of unplugging it and plugging it back in to fix a, a, a problem. So rather than have to wait for your tech to come and, and try to solve that problem, sometimes you can do it yourself. Uh, go through the process of orienting your board. Okay, press the button, try those four points, and be aware of how that works. 
open your internet browser, use the on-screen keyboard, type in with the on-screen keyboard, as well as using the Smart Ink to write over different things. Uh, also, try right-clicking a link to see what those options are, and that'll make you very familiar with that. Okay, so here's your I can statements again. This is what you should be able to do at the end of this. You should feel comfortable doing these things. Again, feel free to go back and watch through this again if you need to. Make sure that you're comfortable with this. Once you're comfortable with this, go ahead and move on to uh, the next section, which is 1.2, and start learning about the smart notebook software, which is where we're going next. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, training video. Please feel free to share this with others, okay? We want a lot of people to know how to use their smart boards effectively so that students can more effectively learn. So please go ahead and share this with others. Thanks for watching.